As we have each day, we're asking questions submitted by reporters from all over southern New England, and today we're going to begin with one by Steve Alquest of Uprise RI regarding the ACI. Two correctional officers now have tested positive for COVID-19, and 71 inmates now scheduled for potential release. Is enough being done to reduce the prison population during this pandemic? Uh, thank you for the question. I think the answer is yes. Obviously, I change, I look at data every day and we change our response every day. But at this point, uh, I want to thank the director at the Department of Corrections and all the correctional officers and the inmates for their cooperation. We have an excellent system in place. We've released dozens of people, which give us the opportunity to have better social distancing there. Uh, we've incre increased our cleaning, so uh, I would say yes, And but like everything, we'll continue to monitor it. The next question is from Elizabeth Graham of PBN, and this was already said a little bit in your earlier remarks. How many coronavirus cases in the state are in nursing homes, and were any of the people whose deaths were reported today residents of nursing homes? Since this pandemic began, we have a cumulative number of 120 residents that are positive cases associated with nursing homes. And um, as I mentioned, a number of the total deaths um, associated with nursing homes is seven, and that's five at Golden Crest and two at Oak Hill, sadly. The next question is from Bill Bartholomew. Um, Governor, we're getting reports of significant inadequate space in Newport's homeless shelters, while some Newport hotels have simultaneously raised their prices. Is there a way to remedy the situation, even if only at your urging? Thank you for the question. I was not aware of that. Certainly not that local hotels are raising their prices, which is utterly unacceptable, and I will look into that. Uh, we have commandeered a hotel in Warwick in order to uh, quarantine homeless folks, and we will continue to work hard, and I'll especially focus on Newport now that I have that report. Next question is from Tony Mendez at Porter 102.1. What measures are being put in place for WIC recipients who cannot buy groceries because the products that qualify as WIC approved are not available because markets are sold out of those items? I understand Texas made changes to their program. So we have increased the amount of money that we are putting on people's ED EBT cards, and that's on account of some of the federal stimulus uh, money. So every about half of Rhode Islanders received an increased amount of money um, for food stamps. What you're allowed to use it on is, of course, regulated by the federal government. And at this point, there are shortages in many grocery stores. I will say that uh, the, the grocery stores are continuing to have their stocks reshelved. And so I would just ask for a little bit of patience. If, it, if your item isn't there today, when you go back in a week, I think it should be there. All reports are that most grocery stores, particularly the bigger ones, are still able to restock their shelves. In addition to that, if there are items that you need, uh, I know Family Service RI and 211 at United Way are providing uh, resources for folks for extra food, extra wipes, extra disinfectant, and we want to make sure we obviously take care of the least vulnerable, the most vulnerable at this time. So 211 at the United Way or Family Service RI. Next question is from Matt Allen of WPRO Radio. Governor, the heads of Lifespan and Care New England said today on WPRO that we are ready for a surge. You have said we are not. Can you reconcile the two different characterization, characterizations? Excuse so me. I didn't hear what they said, but I'm quite confident we're on the same page because we talk pretty much every day. We are getting ready for a surge. We are putting plans in place to ready ourselves for a surge. But as I just explained, we are going to use the Convention Center and Citizens Bank Building and the Lowe's Building for an additional 1,000-plus hospital beds. We do not have a single hospital bed in any of those alternative sites right now, so we are not ready. Uh, the same is true for Lifespan and Care New England. They have surge plans that they're putting in place, and they're doing a terrific job to do that. But if there were a surge today or in a week, 
we do not have the capacity. So we are getting ready, but the reality is this takes time and you can't flip a switch to have, you know, a couple thousand new beds in the hospital system available tomorrow. The next question is for Dr. Alexander Scott from Kim Kalunian at Channel 12, WPRI. As we learn more about coronavirus, what are your concerns around asymptomatic transmission? It has been unprecedented how much knowledge and information has evolved during this uh, pandemic. And so knowing that, we are getting additional information about the ability of this virus to be transmitted in persons who either have no symptoms or are pre-symptomatic before they actually develop symptoms and the ability to transmit, as well as what I discussed earlier, the fact that symptoms can be so atypical, so um, unique. Um, we are used to telling people that you will just have fever and cough or sore throat. Um, with respiratory viral illnesses, and we are seeing that that is changing. It can just be a headache, or just be fatigue, or vomiting and diarrhea, and a little bit of muscle aches. So the ability to transfer that information to the public requires us to be flexible and to continue to emphasize that it is evolving, including the fact that um, symptoms may not always be present when transmission is occurring. And so raising awareness about that across the board is a, a critical focus for us now. The next question is from Brian Crandall at Channel 10. What do you tell families of residents at Golden Crest and Oak Hill worried about their loved ones? Why do those facilities have such high case numbers compared to others? We want all families of loved ones in nursing homes, one, to know how much it is evident to us in our engagement with the staff at the nursing homes that those residents of the nursing homes are their family too, and they want to be there to be able to support them. We know it is normal to have fears and concerns about what's going on. We have known from the beginning um, that this type of congregate setting increases the risk of transmission because people are in such close quarters in a nursing home setting um, and staff have to do a tremendous amount of work across patients. So it's important for us to be able to make the shift that I spoke of earlier, coming up with creative ways to have one staff person do the work of many people entering a room so that we decrease the number of different types of people entering a room. And I will say that this conversation is happening regularly with all nursing homes. There isn't anything differently that Golden Crest or Oak Hill has done compared to other nursing homes. It is a challenging setting, as I've mentioned. And there are precious people who are there um, that belong to various family members and that the staff are, are looking to care for. So we will continue to work hard with the nursing homes, all of them, including Golden Crest and Oak Hill, to respond to this uh, challenge. The next question is directed towards the governor from Kate Nagel of Go Local. You mentioned of a stay-at-home directive today. How does that differ from the previous stay-at-home order? Is this a lockdown? Yes. I'm sorry for any confusion. I was referring to the stay-at-home order, executive order that I signed um, a week or so ago. So that there's no new executive order that I'm announcing today, but the point I was making is that we just aren't seeing the compliance with the stay-at-home order that we need to see. And so I'm asking people to um, do better at staying home. So the only absolutely essential workers should be going to work, and all you should be doing is going to work and going home. If you should not leave your house under any circumstances if you are sick even a little bit. If you have the sniffles, stay home. Anyone, even if you're an, especially if you're an essential worker. Uh, so it's just a re-emphasizing uh, what the order is that I had signed the other day. So just to, it is not characterized as a lockdown? No, I'm not even sure what that means. There's so 
many words flying around right now, but no, it's obviously not a lockdown. Look outside, you see cars everywhere. You can still go to the grocery store. You can still go to see, uh, the pharmacy if you need to. There are essential workers that have to go to work, but for everybody else, you should be staying at home. That's the reason that I decided to close all non-essential retail. This isn't a time to go shopping for clothes and books at least not in person. I would love it if you did that online with a local merchant because they need all the business they can get, but it's just a time to hunker down and stay at home. Next question is from Gina M. Is there a plan to test all staff members and residents at every nursing home and assisted living facility? And how long would it take to get results from that? So let me say a word about testing. In an ideal world, we would be able to do that. In an idea, I have said that we wanted to be at 1,000 a day, and that's where we are. In an ideal world, we would be much higher than that. And in an ideal world, we would be able to do exactly that. We don't live in that world. We live in a resource-constrained world where every day is a fight with every other state and even the federal government to get the equipment that we need to do the level of testing that we need to do. On Monday, on a call with President Trump and the Vice President and the, and the governors, we were told that each state would be receiving, right away, 15 high-throughput Abbott diagnostic machines. We have yet to see those, and I'm still trying to get my hands on those. Those are the kind of machines, rapid testing, that you could imagine us putting at nursing homes, at hospitals. So the short answer is we're just not there yet. Uh, we're testing as many people as we can. It is my hope that a week from now we'll be testing many more than we are today. And as when we get there, you know, we, we want to be testing as many people as possible, most especially in these nursing homes, most especially um, healthcare workers and then immediately moving them to isolation if they are sick or positive. Paul Parker asks, how many beds will we need? How many will we have? Uh, do you want to take that? So in terms of, of the surge, there's two phases that we're kind of uh, focused on right now. Uh, we have uh, what the Lifespan and Care New England teams are putting together uh, in terms of uh, bed availability and of course that all depends on uh, what other types of cases that they are dealing with. In total, uh, from uh, post-hospital, or I should say going with the alternate hospital site uh, methodology, uh, right now we have over a thousand that we are planning for. I would sense that based on some of the data points that need to be refined later in the week, we'll certainly get to a point where we'll try to double that availability. Um, so that's where we are right now. Next question is from Alexander Leslie of WPRI Channel 12. Do we know how many cases or at least deaths involve people with underlying health conditions? We are collecting um, data along those lines. A larger number of the deaths, a larger proportion of the unfortunate deaths are in people with underlying health conditions. Um, another uh, example of that I can relay is 57% of the unfortunate deaths are associated with residents of congregate living settings, which sometimes also uh, connects to people who have underlying um, medical conditions. And we can continue to provide more details on that. Brian Amaral asked, did the state meet, it meet its goal of 1,000 tests per day yesterday? Yes, a tremendous amount of work is um, going towards making sure that we have the number of tests that are needed. We have worked very closely with primary care providers because that is who needs to be called in order to have tests performed. Um, and we are continuing the very aggressive approach with nursing homes healthcare workers and hospitalized patients in addressing the number. So we have come very close to the thousand when you have the compilation of all of those approaches in place. Next question is from a guest reporter. What, if any, additional resources or help is the state providing to the families of those who have died from COVID-19? 
We are continuing to um, work with our health and human services uh, agencies to help make sure that the supports that family needs, families need are available. It will obviously vary for each family um, and we'll continue to engage with families as we need to to make sure that they have the support that we can provide. Governor, the last question for today's briefing comes from Tara Granahan. Are there any health insurers offering plans for those laid off or unemployed since the crisis struggling with prescription costs around $250 to $300 a month? Yes. Thank you for the question. I, it just drives home again how many folks are struggling right now because they've been laid off. So I would remind everybody that Medicaid uh, is available. We took the Medicaid expansion and uh, you, you could call to see if you're eligible because that is an option for folks who have been laid off. Uh, th we have extended open enrollment at the Health Source RI, so folks can go on Health Source RI and purchase a plan that might be right for them, and some of those plans there uh, could provide good options. I, I do want to go back and make, to end with a very important point about testing. It relates to what Dr. Nicole said and the thousand, thousand a day. Uh, and this, and I would ask members of the media to help push this message. So for a long time, f for two weeks, we were saying we didn't have enough testing capacity and so we were having to limit the testing capacity to folks who were first responders, healthcare workers, in the hospital, et cetera. That isn't the case anymore because of a lot of hard work by a lot of people. We now absolutely have the capacity to do a thousand or more tests a day, a thousand or more swabs a day. Um, General Callahan and his team has done a fantastic job. We have multiple sites around the state where you can get swabbed at a drive through center. The state health lab is working around the clock. We have private uh, clinical labs who are taking our samples. Our supply chain team has managed to get the supplies we need. So, I'm, so now the message is different, and I'm asking if, you're, if you feel like you need to be tested, call your primary care provider. And if you're a primary care provider, don't be shy. Send folks. We are ready. We have the capacity. And we need to ramp up our testing. So I know that's different than what we've been saying. But right now, we absolutely can handle over 1,000 a day. And we need to start seeing the referrals from the primary care providers. And we need, we need folks not to be shy about calling their doctor if they're sick and wondering whether they need a test because we're ramping up and the more we test, the better off we'll all be. With that, I will say this. We are still reliant upon out-of-state labs, commercial labs, so please don't expect that you're gonna get your test result right away. If you're a healthcare worker, if you're very sick, you'll get a quicker result, but if you are you know, an average Rhode Islander who feels they need to be tested, it could still take two, three days for you to get your results back. But I want, I want everyone to know we're open for business for testing, so please let's go ahead and get us those referrals so we can get more accurate data around who's getting sick, how many people are sick, and then getting those folks into isolation as quickly as possible. Thank you for your time. It's the weekend. It's a, it's a rainy day. It's a great day to stay inside, watch a movie, read a book, cook, hang out with your family, stay in the house this weekend. If you do, everybody's going to be better off, and I'll think you're a hero forever. So thank you.